Well, China is polluting the earth for us all, and we're all doomed because they are climate pigs, right? That's what we hear. That's the climate alarmism about China. Right. Actually, that is racist and unfounded anti-China sentiment, and it's just not true. Uh, so I'm going to show you the data. This is just an inf a familiar environmental line that you hear that they want to guilt you into believing this climate buffoonery that, you know, this country full of brown people, doesn't matter where it is, using up all the resources to live and we need to stop them. You've seen this before. Sometimes it takes the form like this. This is model Giselle Bunchen crying over deforestation in Brazil. It's like an AOC at the at the border moment. Get the tears. Are you rolling on this? Make sure you get her tears. Oh my God, how is she going to get those new purses that she loves? This is devastating. What she never learns in this documentary is that the people who lived in those forests and in those regions had an incredibly different difficult and different life living off the land. And those cattle farms then increase their quality of life to, I'd say about 0.00001% of the quality of life of Giselle Bunchen, which is a big improvement, right? And so what she's crying for is for those people to continue living a hard life. She doesn't have to. Uh, okay. But Greta Thunberg told me that this whole world relies on the Amazon for oxygen, they say they are the lungs of the planet. Well, here's what happened when climate journalist Michael Schellenberger went there, and he actually asked the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change about that. Here is the response he got when he asked the person who wrote that report. <laughs> His name is Dan, what is it, Dan Nepsad. Uh, it's bullshit, is basically what he said. This idea that the Amazon is the lungs of the world. There's no science behind that. The Amazon produces a lot of oxygen, but it uses the same amount of oxygen through respiration, so it's a wash. In fact, so if anyone tells you that the Amazon is the lungs of the world, you need to remember this. Um, Just say it's bullshit. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kids, the end your, of it. Your kids come home from school, and they're like, Mommy, we need to... Save the Amazon for our own ecology. Our lungs, ecology. the lungs of the world. Be like, son, that's bullshit. It's bullshit. Um, let's just look again at this. According to Oxford University ecologists, Amazon plants consume about 60% of the oxygen they produce in respiration, the biochemical process whereby they obtain energy. Microbes, which break down rainforest biomass, consume the other 40%. So on all in all practical terms, the net contribution of the Amazon ecosystem to the world's oxygen is effectively zero. The same is pretty much true of the ecosystems of Earth, at least on the timescales that are relevant to humans. Um, as for lungs, they absorb oxygen and emit carbon dioxide. By contrast, the Amazon and all plant life store carbon, though not 25% as climate activists who sued Brazil claim, but rather 5%. So if we're really studying what that means, so no, Greta Thunberg, you do not rely on the Amazon. You don't. Uh, maybe if you buy beef from there, you do, but you don't rely on it for the lungs of the earth. Um, and this idea that Brazil should not be allowed to deforest to feed its people is especially racist because guess which other countries are 70% deforested for farmland and agriculture and industry? Any guesses? 70%. Hmm. I'll tell you. The U.S.? Uh, well, yes, but uh, I, I don't think it's seventy, quite 70%. Germany and France. Do we deny Germans and French people the right to grow food and eat? We do not, right? Where no, is the see. outrage no, about that? Only Brazilians shouldn't industrialize to feed their people. Oh, in Africa, too. Don't in, Down in Africa, don't you even think about progress? Deforesting for farms, uh, relying on gas. No, you stay there. You eat millet. You wear, you know, loincloths. We do not want to see any progress out of you. That's only for us. This is the racist rhetoric that comes from climate scientists who do. In fact, Michael Schellenberger went to Africa. I believe he was in the Congo. And some of them were like, we don't want conservationists here. No conservationists, because that's a bad word to them. A conservationist comes to them and says, no, no, don't don't buy these plastic water bottles. Don't have, you know, easily accessible water. We want you to keep walking back and forth to this dirty river. Um, because plastic's bad for the earth. You cannot make progress in your life the way I have. 
you must continue to live off the land. So anytime they have somebody foreign come, they're like, please, no conservationists, no conservationists here. Um, well, this climate line of thought absolutely extends to China. For years, the Western media has been presenting us with headlines like these, telling us that China is such a high producer of industry and farming, and that's the reason we have climate change. Air pollution, they say, linked to all these premature death, pollution rising, fear for Chinese soil. Um, and, you know, the narrative is it's your fault because you order your birthday party favors on Amazon. They're made in China, shipped across the sea from plastic. China's the big polluter. You're a problem, too. Uh, well, here is Reuters this summer telling us again why China's climate is so bad and it's their fault. Record heat and historic floods in China this summer, but little public debate on climate change and what the world's top carbon polluter can do about it. Campaigners like Liu Junyan of Greenpeace East Asia are calling it a missed opportunity. I believe that the coverage by mainstream media is indeed quite disappointing. China's CO2 emissions grew 10% in the first quarter of 2023 from a year earlier, according to the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air. China has set some bold green targets. President Xi Jinping has pledged to make the country carbon neutral by 2060, but experts want faster action. They worry Beijing is failing to engage the public, which could slow the transition. OK, but again, the hypocrisy here is that China should not be allowed to have their carbon emissions peak, even though Guess what other nations did have their carbon emissions peak, not through activism, but through technological advances? Any guesses? Well, again, let's turn to Michael Schellenberger's book, Apocalypse Never. Um, he says that the U.S. and Britain had their carbon emissions peak uh, between 2007 and 2018. So it's all right for some, isn't it? Most energy experts believe emissions in developing nations will peak and decline just as they did in developing nations once they achieve a similar level of prosperity. Uh, Bjorn Lundberg's research is also the same, is that if you allow nations to increase their quality of life, carbon emissions come down because people stop cooking indoors on uh, you know, poorly ventilated spaces. They start stop using coal. They start buying things for their lives that make them make their lives easier, that are, have less of a carbon output. Um, if we could just go back to that screen, uh, it says, as a result, global temperatures today appear more likely to peak at between two and three degrees centigrade, not four, even though they're screaming at us like, oh, we're going past two. We're going to four. We're all screwed. In fact, the an International Energy Agency now forecasts carbon emissions in 2040 to be lower than in almost all other scenarios. Why haven't we heard that? Why doesn't the media tell us that, do you wonder? Even though they're saying it may not be that bad. Why, do you think? Uh, he says here, can we credit 30 years of climate alarmism for the reductions in emissions? We cannot. Total emissions from energy in Europe's largest countries. Germany, Britain, and France peaked in the 70s, thanks mostly to the switch from coal to natural ga gas and nuclear, um, things that these activists, Thurm Thunberg, AOC, and other climate act activists adamantly oppose. Um, although we did see Thunberg change her tune on nuclear when Germany closed down a nuclear plant only to build a coal one. And she was like, wait, 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 wait. No, in this case, we need to go back to nuclear. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in a second. So when people say like, oh, we really have to stop China from polluting, then I usually ask them, how come your country got to peak in admissions and make a quality of life for their citizens better all the while? Right, we ask Africa to sort of hop over and skip this, right? So all of those African countries, you can skip over the part where you industrialize and actually lift yourselves out of poverty and you go right to using wind farms skip right. over it and we see how that's working out it's not the answer is it's not working out absolutely well, but if we if we allow them if we allow them time to develop their own technologies then they won't have to buy it from us i mean that's, that's, that's there's definitely that that spin in there you know that, that we we want them to buy our technology not not take the time to create their own yes because we don't profit off that this is a problem as well um also we don't do really well at creating our own reusable energy, uh, especially in the United States, because climate activists stop us from cleanly extracting uranium and lithium, which we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, so as predicted, China now says that carbon emissions have peaked 
and are expected to decline within the next year or two. Not because any climate asshole glued themselves to a street somewhere, not because of any protests of Greenpeace activists hopping on a ship, not because of any of that, literally because of technology and private innovation. That literally is why. Uh, the article says that this is also because China has so many renewable resources. Indeed, that's true. China has built way more solar and wind farms than the EU, the US, India, or Brazil. Uh, but that is also not the main reason because we've seen that those are unreliable sources of energy. And usually when you build a solar farm, you have to build a backup. So you're almost doubling um, you know, the amount of output that you have to put into these resources. And so these backups usually are either nuclear or coal or something like that. Um, and so that's not necessarily, and no one should think that China is ever going to be totally renewable with wind and solar. Um, and in fact, though, China, we saw that when electric vehicle adoption in China went up, smog emissions also went up because those electric cars on the road were being charged and plugged in to chargers that ran on coal plants. Uh, but in fact, China is phasing out those coal plants. Take a look at this chart showing just how few coal plants, how they're in the rapid decline. Uh, so what are they replacing it with? Well, this article in the Telegraph doesn't say this, but I can tell you where they're replacing their energy. In fact, CNBC was willing to report on it. It's nuclear. China is building at least 21 nuclear reactors to build out their nuclear energy grid, which has no carbon emissions. We've talked about this and is widely accepted as the safest and most reliable form of energy known to man, uh, despite its bad reputation because of Chernobyl, which was human error and Fukushima, which was due to an earthquake. Um, and now there are technologies in place to stabilize in the event of an earthquake. Uh, and again, just a reminder, nuclear energy has the lowest deaths per kilowatt hour and does not pollute because it doesn't produce any greenhouse gas. gas. Uh, it, but nuclear does require uranium. Guess where China can get its uranium from its own self because they don't have climate litigation the way we do in the United States. In the United States, there's plenty of lithium and uranium. We could run our own country, but we don't because environmentalists sue. So we can't. And in fact, in the United States, we even have technologies that would make the extractions of these minerals cleaner, um, have less runoff, less pollution of water. But no one's using it because we're so busy being stumped up by climate babies. Um, all this to say, China is working to reach its goal of net zero by 2060, but it was not because of any environmental activism, no Paris climate accords, no idiots sitting on roads or throwing soup at artwork. Uh, their reduction in emissions was done through innovation and in mostly the private sector and technological advances. Uh, people who study these things have been saying that private innovation will reduce humans' impact, but climate babies aren't listening. This is the way that humans will improve the environment. Um, it is not by talking down to other countries or crying about oil. So let us know what you think of this in the chat below. Klaus Schwab is going to be pissed. I mean, this is literally the entire agenda from the World Economic Forum. This is their climate alarmism handbook about China is always at the top of their well, list. Well, many elected and unelected officials use climate alarmism yeah. to their power. Um, and, you know, there does seem to be indication that they will not be able to do that for much longer as people start to study um, and see, yes, emissions peaking because of, you know, and the, the thing is, China will not see their quality of life fall as emissions peak. They're not willing to make that. And it, the data shows that if you were to make that sacrifice, you would actually have a higher carbon output. Right. Um, so. Anyway, yeah. let us know what you think of these numbers in the chat. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.